So you finally were able to sit down at the spades table, but you keep losing. Well, I'm here to help. Stay tuned. What up everybody, it's CJ the Six, and today I'm gonna teach you how to win at spades. Now the first rule of spades is figuring out the house rules. Today, I wanna show you how to play Joker Joker Deuce Deuce. The reason it's called that is because you have the big joker, the little joker, the two of diamonds, and the two of spades. Now, I want to make this very clear. The two of diamonds is treated as a spade. It is a spade. Yes, it has the diamond symbol, but for all intents and purposes of this game, it is a spade. It's a spade. Now that we got that out the way. The next hardest thing to do in spades is bidding. Now when you bid, the smallest bid you can make is board. Board is four books. You cannot bid less than four books unless you wanna do a nil bid, which means you're not gonna get any books, but that's not often played. So on the first hand, it bids itself, which means you don't need to make a bet. However, if you don't make board, which means you don't get four books, you're immediately off the table. You're kicked off, no ifs, ands, or buts, no rematches. So you have to make four on the very first hand and pretty much every hand after that or get set. Now, a very easy way to count the books in your hand is to count all the aces and kings that you have. So in this case, we will have one, two. And because we're playing Joker, Joker, Deuce, Deuce, we can count each of those as their own independent book. So we have one for the big joker and one for the little joker. So this hand, you would say, has four books, but that will be incorrect. If you look closely, you'll notice that you only have one club. On average, if everything was played perfectly, everybody would get three diamonds, three clubs, three hearts, and four spades. In a perfect game, the ace, king, and queen will all be able to claim a book. However, as you can see, there's only one club in this hand, which means that this person can cut clubs when the king comes out. And because of that, they are able to claim one more book. So this hand actually has five books. Let's look at another example. So let's start with our basics. We have the two of diamonds, two of spades, ace of spades, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, king of hearts. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. You guessed it, that is not the correct answer. I'll give you a second to think what it might be. We're gonna count the two of diamonds and the two of spades as our own books. However, I would not count the ace of spades and the king of spades because on top of the two of diamonds and two of spades is also the big joker and the little joker. So it's not very likely that the ace and king will win by themselves. They will most likely be used for when the person to your right plays a spade, but doesn't play a spade high enough so you can use that to beat. But you can't always count on that. Next, I would count the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs. However, I wouldn't count the king of hearts because as you can see, there are five hearts in this hand. And on average, everybody gets three. You have two extra hearts in your hands, which means it's possible that someone will cut this king after the ace is played. But it's possible, not for certain. So I would say this hand has one, two, three, four. And if we notice from last time, because you only have one diamond, that's an extra book. So five. This hand has five books and a possible because of the king of hearts. Now, me and my partner, we confer with each other. I say I have five and a possible. They say they have five. We decide to go 10. 
the other team will look at their hands and they will probably say board because we have 10 and if we counted our books correctly then they only have three but they have to bid board sucks i know now there's one other thing about bidding and that's bags so let's say instead of us bidding 10 we bid seven however we do get 10. we still get our 70 points because you get 10 points per book however we now get three bags bags by themselves are harmless until you get 10. when you get 10 bags you get set 100 points which means you subtract 100 points from your score after you tallied whatever score you get for the round so if we bid eight books we get 10 books we get our 80 points however those two bags gave us 10 we subtract 100 so we're net negative 20 for the round so the lesson here is bid correctly and don't underbid now the fun part of spades actually playing during this the number one rule is watch the board watching the board is simply paying attention to what cards have been played and who has played them now let's play a couple rounds this person leads the jack of clubs so clubs led your partner plays the ace of clubs this person plays the six of clubs what do you play yes the eight of clubs now your partner has won the book they get to lead the next hand they play the seven of clubs clubs led this person plays the king of clubs now what should you play if you said a spade good job the best spade to play in this particular instance is the five of spades it's a low spade nobody else is probably cutting it's completely safe and what do you know they play the club so you win that book now if your partner is watching the board and they saw you cut clubs they know to play any clubs from their hands to let you cut them and win the book so you've won let's lead with the ace of hearts because leading with aces is generally a very safe idea and a great idea. They play the eight of hearts, four of hearts, five of hearts. Good job. Now you want to be a little ballsy. If you're watching the board, you've noticed that we haven't seen the ace of diamonds, but you want to play the king of diamonds this is a very unsafe move because the ace of diamonds could be in one of their hands if they have the ace of diamonds you just lost a possible book but because this is a training game they play a five of diamonds now here's something interesting your partner has both the ace of diamonds and the nine of diamonds what do you think would be the best choice for them to make the nine of diamonds because you don't want to beat your partner if you can help it sometimes the ace of diamonds might be the only diamond you have in your hand and that's just what you have to play but if you have a choice let your partner win the book and you win the next one spades is a team game now the last thing that i want to talk about before we end this video is throwing off versus cutting generally if you don't have a suit you will cut it however if you don't have a suit and your partner can win the book throw off which means play a different suit because only the suit that led matters unless it's a spade for example this person leads with the seven of diamonds your partner plays the ace of diamonds this person plays the queen of diamonds you could cut diamonds because there are no diamonds in your hand however that would mean you cut your partner and that's generally how you start a fight so instead of cutting your partner 
just play the five of clubs. The five of clubs still loses. Even if that was the ace of clubs, it would lose because diamonds led, but never do that. So your team still wins the book and you get to save a spade to cut something more important. And that is how you win in spades. After this, you should be able to hold your own. I'm not saying you'll be able to take somebody's lunch money, but you should be able to learn how to get your trash talking game together. I see you guys next time. And by then you should have a couple dubs under your belt.